So you're probably scared of the carnivore diet, but you shouldn't be. And in most of the things in life that we're fearful from is from lack of knowledge. The beautiful thing is you don't have to listen to me. This information is out there and the things that you're scared of have been asked and answered over and over again. So you're probably scared for lack of knowledge, but the beautiful thing is in this day and age, we all have one of these. Fire it up and do some research and you will get over those fears. I say to people, give it a try. Like, what do you have to lose if you've gotten to this point before? Look at all these incredible testimonies. It's not going to hurt you. And it has literally changed my life forever. And I've witnessed it change the lives of, I want to say thousands of people at this point, literally millions of views. I get hundreds of comments a day from people that this has changed their lives. I've talked to so many individuals. So, uh, Give it a try. What do you what do you have to lose? You deserve to live at least one day in your life feeling like I feel, feeling like a proper human, living life to the fullest potential without that brain fog, without that depression, anxiety, without those aches and pains, with energy, with happiness. It just feels amazing. Don't be scared. Give it a try. Hello, everybody. Words can't express how excited I am today to talk with an incredible human being, Carrie Mann Jr. Carrie is one of the most inspirational and encouraging and selfless men that I've ever met, and I am proud to call him a dear friend. So thank you so much, Carrie, for joining me today. Wow, thank you, Adam. That's a heck of an intro. I appreciate it. Likewise, I'm glad to be your friend as well, and uh, happy to be here. Awesome, awesome. So Carrie, for, for those that aren't familiar with you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so I'm a carnivore for 275 days now. I track it by the days. Uh, carnivores completely changed my life. Uh, I live in Wisconsin, wife, and I have triplets plus one, which is kind of unique about me. And uh, I'm working on a documentary called Healing Humanity, The Power of a Proper Human Diet. And uh, carnivore diets changed my life forever. And I'm trying to share that uh, word with other people and the examples of other people I found that carnivores changed their life for as well. That's awesome. So, so this carnivore diet, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what, what is the carnivore diet? Yeah, the carnivore diet, that's a great question because there's a couple ways to answer it. I guess the simple terms is I eat only animal products, mostly beef, butter, bacon, eggs. Uh, I think the real answer, though, is the carnivore diet is the proper human diet. I believe it's what humans have eaten since the start of time. I believe every species has an intended diet, and the carnivore diet is the intended diet for humans. It's the natural uh, way of eating. And I've tried every diet over the years, literally every diet. I did keto on and off for years. I did paleo, Mediterranean. I did OMAD. I did several fasts. Weight Watchers, counting calories, literally all of them. And every time I was doing one of those other diets, it was always like, this just doesn't seem right. Like I'm sitting here counting and calculating all these calories. And I feel like I'm depriving myself or starving myself in some way in order to lose the weight. And carnivore diet's been the only thing that's just natural. It just, it seems so easy because I just eat and I don't think about it. And I get all of the nutrients I need from meat. I also tell people, so a lot of people say, carnivore diet, oh, you must eat a lot of meat. Yes, but surely you still have vegetables. No, I haven't had any vegetables. In 270 plus days, haven't had any fruit, haven't had any vegetables. I get all of the nutrients I need from beef, butter, bacon, eggs, and meat. So that's the carnivore diet. That's awesome. So how long have you been doing this, you said? 274 days okay without vegetables or plants not a single vegetable not a single plant although one time uh my wife took me out to dinner i think we were celebrating my hundredth day on carnivore of course i got steak and they put broccoli on the plate a little tiny bit of broccoli touched the steak and it completely disgusted me but uh other than that and i didn't eat it but some of it touched my steak but yeah no no nothing but uh, beef, butter, bacon, eggs. I've had a little seafood here, there, a little chicken, but but nothing otherwise. Okay, well, I, I think we can all uh, vouch for your carnivore card. You still have it. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I always say that, and people are like, "Oh, you didn't cheat. You're so good." But I did keto for a decade. I don't know, on and off for years and years. And I 
cheated on keto so many times and it messed me up so bad. I can't moderate. I've heard other people like uh, the wonderful Dr. Barry say some people have a carb dial where they can, they can have a little bit of carbs and they're okay. I have a carb switch. It's on or off and I can't, I can't turn it on or all, at, at all or I'll just, I can't, can't moderate it. So. Awesome. Awesome. So in comparison to the, all these other diets that you've done and what you're doing now, yeah, carnivore lifestyle, you know, how, how do those compare? There's no comparison because before they were diets and they're like, I have to do this to lose the weight. Uh, carnivores, like you just said, it's a lifestyle now. I don't think about it anymore other than I'm constantly doing healing humanity and YouTube videos on carnivore, but I don't think about what I'm eating or doing anymore. And the beauty of carnivore for me that I, it took me a while to realize this and why it works so well is just because it's so natural. It's just natural. Like I think humans have naturally done, like I said, since the start of time. So mm -hmm. I, I think a big problem we have in the world, a big problem I had in the world, and the reason I was so unhealthy and so sick for so long is just an escape from what was natural for humans. Uh, mainly with the foods I was eating, but also <clears throat> sitting under fluorescent lights all the time, not getting proper sunlight, not getting fresh air and exercise, uh, all of the different chemicals and things we come into contact with, but mainly just eating all those unnatural foods for so long. And carnivore lifestyle is just a return to natural. And uh, it's something I don't really even think about anymore. I just, I just do it every day. It's the easiest thing in the world, really. Awesome. I too have had similar experiences. So what do you think that this is going to be the way that you eat from now on, or is it just a temporary thing? I am a carnivore for life. I, without a doubt, I will never have another vegetable, another piece of fruit. And I say that to people, it scares people because they probably thinking, Oh, I don't know if I could do that, but it doesn't bother me at all. I don't have any issue with it. Like I said, it's been 270 plus days and I'm lacking for nothing. I get all the nutrients I need from the meat I'm eating. I feel better than I have my entire life. I have more energy. Um, I could get up and I feel like I could get up and run a marathon before carnivore. I would lose my breath and get dizzy just standing up. It's just been completely life changing for me. So not only am I, am I ne never going to have fruit or vegetables again, I'm never going to drink another liquid other than water again, too, which I. It's all, the only thing I've had 270 plus days on carnivore. I haven't had, some people will do coffee and they're just fine with it or other things like that. Uh, but it's just been water for me. And there's, there was a weird point when I was doing carnivore, where it was just things switched over. It took quite a while. Mm -hmm. It didn't take a while. It took a, maybe two weeks or so. You get over the sugar addiction. That's the hardest thing for everybody. But I don't know, a couple months into carnivore, just kind of the switch went off where it was like, I'm no longer eating for entertainment, which I've done the entire 43 years of my life. It was always about eating for entertainment or pleasure. Now it's just sustenance. It just, I eat and I'm full and I don't, I don't have to think about it anymore. So um, I don't know if that happens for all carnivores. Some, some carnivores still have little treats or they keep things in like diet Coke, or they'll have some berries here or there or some things like that. But um yeah, it's uh, a switch went off for me, and I, I feel like I'm I'm gonna have no issue doing this for the rest of my life. That's awesome, man. Uh, so I, I I appreciate you sending me a list too of things that the carnivore diet has helped. So for everyone watching and listening, all of the topics that we're discussing today are challenges that Carrie had that were completely eliminated or reversed by eating a carnivore diet. So. With that, let, let's dive into the first, uh, the first thing and something that's been on your mind here recently with uh, some of the videos that you've been producing and uh, some communications that you had with uh, the Royal College of Psychiatry, uh, which is depression. So can you tell us a little bit about how, you know, how bad was your depression before you were diagnosed? Yeah, wow. Um, it was horrible. It's hard to describe to people that haven't been through depression before, but that was definitely the biggest thing that changed for me on carnivore. I suffered from clinical depression for uh, over 10 years. And uh, it's, uh, I I've talked to some other people and they say, it's like you're looking at life through a completely different lens. 
I've had people say to me when I was just deeply depressed, oh, you know, just go for a walk. You'll feel better. Um, I get down sometimes too, but it's a deeper, darker level of depression that's hard to understand unless you've, uh, you've been there before. You just, you can't just go for a walk. You can't get up out of bed. Um, you just, everything you look at is you're looking at through this sort of le- negative uh, lens. Uh, the best word to describe it and I've heard this over and over again from other folks suffering from depression and anxiety is hopelessness. Uh, and it's, I have teenage daughters at home. So sometimes they, they exaggerate things. They're like, Oh, I'm so hopeless. I have homework, but this is literal hopelessness where you just, you don't want to live anymore. You don't want to go on anymore. And, um, yeah, it, it got so dark and deep for me. Started about I went through it for about 10 years. I had it on and off, and then it just started to get worse. I think about 10 years ago was when it happened. Um, I would just get to such a deep, dark place. I couldn't, I couldn't function. I couldn't go out in the world. I, I had trouble focusing. Uh, my sleep started getting messed up. I was diagnosed with insomnia. There was, there was points in my life where I just, I wouldn't sleep, or maybe I'd get like an hour's worth of sleep, but it really wasn't any sort of sleep where I'd wake up and feel like, oh, I feel good now. I feel regenerated. Uh, it was horrible for my family. That was the, the worst part of it for my, I have four girls and my wife. And you want to put on like a happy face. Uh, but at the same time, I hate being fake and not being truthful or real. And it's like, you either put on a happy face or your family's like, geez, why is dad miserable all the time? Like, is it something I did? And you're, you're bringing all these other people down with you and there's just not much you could do about it. Uh, we used to have this uh, woodshed, uh, woodworking shop, and uh, there was no windows in it. And I used to go down there to do woodworking. And in reality, when I was just deeply depressed, I used to sit down there, I'd have a little chair and I would literally sit down there for hours, just in the dark, doing nothing, just sitting there, just because. I couldn't face my family and I didn't want to bring them down anymore. And it was like, get out of the house, get away a little bit, but not get too far away. So it was really a deep, dark place. Uh, My wife helped me out a lot. And Jen and I have been together since we're 14. So she's kind of been through all of it with me. She got me in to get help. And uh, they put me on medication for depression. And they told me, it's going to take three months, Carrie, before we know if this is going to work or not, which was just horrible because I was suicidally depressed, suicidal ideation. Like it was a very, very dark place for sure. Wow. And then to, to be told, well, give it three months and it, it might not work. We don't know. The only way to know for sure is if you take these pills for three months. So uh, I tried it like I had no other alternative, really. And uh, of course, it didn't work. After three months, you're like, well, we'll just have to up the dosage. Let's just tweak things a little bit and see. And I, I went through that cycle for literally 10 years. Like I'd stay on some pills for a couple of years and they, well, these aren't working. Nothing's working. And then they'd give me another one and another one. I would show people this, but these are all of my, my pills for all of my ailments. A lot of those were for depression and uh, anxiety for years and years. Um, yeah, I don't want to go too dark, but just to, it's, it's so hard to give people an idea. There was, I remember at one point there was this uh, celebrity that killed himself and it was just, it was horrible. I was devastated. He's a big movie star. I was a big fan of his. Uh, I won't mention his name just because speculation and stuff around why he took his own life. But I remember when that happened, I was simultaneously uh, kind of heartbroken. It's such a horrible thing that he died. But then I was also sort of happy for him because it's like, dude, you finally... Now you're free from this just horrible, uh, crippling depression because I know the depths of it. So yeah. on one hand, when I used to see people suicidal or, or when I used to hear like a celebrity or someone committed suicide earlier before my depression, I was like, what a selfish person for doing that. Uh, their family or they had kids. But when I had my deep, dark depression, it actually turned for me where it's like, yeah, you know, if I took my own life, it's going to be horrible for my kids and my children. However, in the long run, it's actually going to be better because I don't have to be with this miserable, just depressed person that's just basically catatonic or like a zombie just sitting there for years and years and years. It's going to be tough for them for a little bit, but it's going to make them stronger in the long run. So that's how messed up my 
my brain was when the depression was really bad. It was depression wow. and anxiety. Um, anxiety was even, even worse, like for years and years, just constantly ruminating and thinking about worst case scenarios of things that in retrospect never even happened, but would just uh, constantly think about horrible things happening and stress about things that didn't need to be stressed about. So, wow. So, so back to the depression. So what were, you know, Jen kind of helped you seek out treatment and, uh, and get you on that path. So what were your thoughts when the doctor told you that you needed to start medication? I was happy for any sort of relief. Like I would have done anything. I would have literally done anything. Um, so I was skeptical, like, oh, it's just going to take some pills and that's going to help. Um, I was also skeptical because I'd seen other people um, and I've done my own research on it. And mm -hmm. so I, was, I had worries about SSRIs and depression medication, but I was so desperate. I was like, please just give me anything. And in my head too, they, they gave me medicine for depression, SSRIs. They also gave me medicine for sleep. They put me on a um, kind of like a sleeping pill. And I was like, anything, like maybe the, just if I could get some, if I could get some sleep, maybe that would help because my insomnia was like up, up, up all night. Like could not, I would, I would go through these routines of like, okay, I'll just have to sit here. If I just sit here with the TV off, I'm just, my eyes will be open. I'll just be up all night, just ruminating and thinking about things. So then I'd start watching TV and then I would be like, then I couldn't fall asleep unless I had the TV going, but I have to have it at a certain level. And all of these just ridiculous things just to try to get like an hour of sleep. So I was uh, skeptical, but hopeless. I have no other, I don't know what else to do. So please give me something and maybe it'll help. Um, it's okay. it's it's kind of interesting because like people now, they're always like, oh, Carrie, you're so passionate and you're so excited about carnivore. And it's like, if I could clearly describe to you or put you in my shoes when I had that depression, you would understand why I'm so fired up and passionate about carnivores because I was in the deepest, darkest place that I can't even describe to people. It's like I was in a prison for 10 years and now I have my freedom. How could I not be excited? And how could I not want to share that with other people that I know right now are in that very prison and that are hopeless and they're going to the doctor and the doctor's saying this and I'm like, that's why I'm so fired up about carnivore too. And that's the whole reason I want to do this documentary is for hopelessness and people with depression, because I would have given anything to know about carnivore at that time. And it's the only thing that's helped me after doing, I, and when, when they gave me these pills, Adam, and they're like, you have to do these. I didn't like, okay, I'll just try it. I followed the prescription to a T. I didn't miss one pill for years and years. I did exactly what they told me and it didn't work for me. And I hear that story from so many other people as well. So that's sad. So, so can you explain, obviously your depression seems to be uh, remedied at this point. So can you explain your thoughts on how the carnivore diet uh, lifted your depression? Yeah, well, I went on a journey and that's part of this healing humanity was going on a journey to figure out some of this stuff. I, I learned about carnivore diet. I had I had done keto years ago. I found a, a documentary on Netflix. It was about the ketogenic diet. And this was in the early days when people weren't really talking about keto. And I tried it and it touched my depression a little bit. It was the only thing that did. The pills didn't. Like a little bit, my depression started lifting enough that I noticed it, but it kept coming back. And so when I heard about carnivore, I'm like, well, that's just extreme uh, keto. And so it makes sense that it would work, but it just, it seems so kind of crazy to me. Uh, but anyways, I jumped in, I did carnivore and within a couple of weeks, my depression, anxiety started going down. It happened quick and some other things happened very quickly. But then I went on this journey, like, I want to learn more. Like, what is the mechanism behind this? What, wh why is this happening? What is causing this? And well, I did a 30 day video on my carnivore experience and that kind of took off and got a lot of attention. And then I was just very fortunate and blessed. I just like, what do I have to lose? I started reaching out to other folks. I talked to some really smart doctors and experts, uh, Dr. Ken Berry, Dr. Philip Ovadia, a heart surgeon that talks about carnivore, to learn more. Like uh, Dr. Anthony Chafee gave me some really good information. Uh, Chris Palmer wrote a book, I believe it's called 
brain energy mm -hmm. that talks about sort of the mechanisms of nutrition and mental health. And um, Dr. Chafee and Dr. Kiltz taught me some more. One of the first things I learned was, and this made total sense to me, my entire life, meat has been demonized. I avoided it, even when I did keto before. And the reason why I think I failed on keto was I would eat salad for lunch, a salad for dinner, and I have a little bit of protein like chicken uh, for, for dinner. But I wasn't getting fat. Fat was always demonized. And in my head, I have, amongst all my other issues, I have heart issues. And in my head, I'm like, I got to avoid that the fatty meat. That's going to give me, raise my cholesterol. It's going to clog my arteries, and I'm going to have a heart attack. So I always avoided that stuff. And I believe what happened is my hormones became dysregulated. What I've since learned going on this healing humanity journey and talking to these doctors is when you get that fatty meat that humans have had since the start of time, it's only this is just recently that we've, we've changed things. You know, the last hundred years or so that we're, we've been demonizing fat and we're eating less fat and we're eating more processed stuff. Um, but when I get that fat, my cholesterol goes up. When my cholesterol goes up, Hormones start to balance that were, in my case, probably completely out of whack, causing a lot mm -hmm. of that depression and anxiety. There's also big tie-ins to your mitochondria health. And when you're eating all of that processed garbage and sugar and seed oils and inflammatory foods, it damages your mitochondria. When you have damaged mitochondria, it messes up a lot of things in your brain. There's a big tie-in between your nutrition and your brain and what's going on there. So. I think it was, I think it was those things. I think if I try to, a, a lot of that, you know, you talk about damage to the mitochondria and some of that stuff just starts going over my head and probably a lot of people listening to this. If I were to simplify it in simplest terms, I, as a human escape from what was natural. I'm eating all of these sugars and seed oils and processed foods and foods with food dyes and, and foods that humans, they're not even, I shouldn't even call those foods. They're just waste. They're, humans weren't intended to eat those things. And they completely mess things up in my system. When I returned to what humans naturally ate and what naturally humans were supposed to do, my hormones balanced out and things that were out of whack in my brain uh, balanced back out again. And I, I feel normal again. And the crazy thing with it, Adam, is I didn't just start eating the proper human diet and then feeling normal. I feel great. I feel amazing. Like my default demeanor, I have a smile on my face now. It's not that I'm just no longer hopelessly depressed and I'm just steady. Like I feel amazing on carnivore. Um, but I feel like it's what humans should naturally feel like. Like it's, it's, it should just be the natural state of most humans. And unfortunately, it's not because most humans are eating all this processed stuff. You ask, you go out and ask 10 people, how are you doing today? Some will be nice. They'll just be like, yeah, fine, whatever. But most of them are saying, uh, uh, yeah, I'm okay, whatever. But if you ask me and I give you the honest answer, for the last 270 days, I feel amazing. I feel wonderful. I feel great. I feel blessed and thankful. I'm like looking forward to the day and what I have going on. And um, that it's the polar opposite completely of what it was like when I was depressed and anxious all the time. That's awesome. So what kind of an impact has that had on your family? The, the biggest, like, I can't, I don't even know if I can describe it. It's just, it's completely changed everything. I, on so many levels too, because my wife and I have triplets plus one, we have four girls and yeah, everyone says this, like life goes by so fast. It does go by so fast. The triplets are 16. Now they're driving. My daughter, Lily is in college which is just insane to me. It, it literally goes by like that. But a big part of that, I think, is the brain fog many humans are in, including myself. I was never before living in the moment. I was always anxious and I was always worried what was going to happen. And I was always like, maybe things will be better in the future, but I was never in the moment. And therefore, I feel like things just buzz by so quickly. And uh, I, mm -hmm. it feels like time went by faster. So that's one thing that's changed now. I'm living in the moment. I'm enjoying the moment. And I, the time I'm spending with the girls and my family is, it seems like it's slowing down and I'm able to live in that moment more. Uh, that's awesome. I'm making bigger, deeper connections with them as well. 
Uh, I feel like I'm making up for lost time on, on one hand, but there's nothing I can do about the past. I can only focus on what I can do right now. So, but it's, it's completely changed everything. And frankly, if I'm being honest, the only reason I am still here right now is because of them is because of my family. Uh, I came really close a couple times with the depression to just ending it all. And if it wasn't for my girls and the family, I, I honestly, I wouldn't be here right now. So. Wow. What? Man, that's just incredible that just changing what you eat, you know, you shop from this section of the grocery store instead of this section and, uh, you're, you're completely off all of your SSRIs, your medications for depression, and it's, it's completely gone. And now your family is, is healed and healing. And, and I mean, that's just incredible to me. It, it is incredible. The thing that's even more incredible though, is I'm like, maybe it's just me, right? Maybe it's just my genetics or something. No. I have literally talked to thousands of people doing these carnivore videos on YouTube. I've been very fortunate. They've, they've taken off and like millions of views across these carnivore videos. So I get so many comments and that's, that's the biggest comment I've been getting is my depression and anxiety gone over and over again. Soldiers with PTSD gone, horrible anxiety. I was just talking to a guy that suffered from clinical depression, three suicide attempts for 30 years. He had depression. He was on all the pills and everything gone on carnivore. I hear it over and over and over again. And like, like I said, I'm doing this documentary healing humanity. The entire reason, the only reason I decided to do this was for all of the hopeless people out there that are still out there. There's millions of people going through depression and anxiety right now. And again, like when I was depressed, I would have given anything in the world to know about this um, instead of just the pills. And I know there's a lot of people out there right now that are, they're completely hopeless. And it's like, we have this answer. Maybe it doesn't work for everybody. I kind of think it does. I kind yeah. of think, like everyone I've talked to that's had depression, it's worked for them. So, I mean, there's some hope there that it's worth a try for sure for people out there. Absolutely. So let's jump into the next one that you've alluded to, which is anxiety. So I have heard you mention in your videos that your anxiety was so bad that if you had a meeting coming up, you would, you, th you would think about wrecking your car uh, just to make sure that that meeting wouldn't happen. So that, that sounds like some serious anxiety. So what, was it really that bad? It was absolutely that bad. And it's one of those things where it's not logical. Like what, why? What? And that example, crashing my car into a tree to get out of a call or to get out of doing something like this with you, Adam, I would have done that. Pre I would never be doing this pre-carnivore. I would have been ruminating about this last night and be like, oh God, what are we going to, what's he going to ask? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And just stressing about it. The, that car example, that wasn't like a one-time thing. Literally every phone call I would have, I would have that thought or, oh, maybe I, oh, I'm sick. Oh, I got to, oh, my wife's sick. I got to run her to the hospital or something. Like just looking for excuses to get out of talking to people. My wow. anxiety was so bad and it was never for anything ever for years and years that came to fruition none of the things that i ever was anxious about necessitated being anxious about they never hurt me or bothered me or anything uh and the amount of years that i imagine that could take off of someone's life like the stress that's putting on your body is horrible for you constantly stressed and anxious and your your heart is literally the physiology of your body your heart's literally pumping faster and working harder to worry about things that need not be worried about. That was one of the incredible things on carnivore when that went away. Um, I, I'm like, I am fearless now. I have no fears. I have no anxiety. It's like, I don't know. I almost died before pre-carnivore. So I don't know if that plays into it, but I think the biggest thing is the chemicals and stuff in my brain. Humans, like that, that sort of anxiety, if you think about it, it's a necessary evolutionary thing. If I was in the wild and a lion was chasing me, I should have that anxiety and my right. heart should start pumping and I should start running. The day and age we live in right now, it's really not necessary. Unless someone just broke through the door there with a gun, then I should have it coming up. But that's never happened to me in 43 years. I really don't know if I could think about something that would have necessitated me being that anxious. Uh, it's a good tool to have in case a bear does start chasing after me. But other than that, humans should not be anxious on a daily basis. 
And that was the case for me. And it's the case for so many else. I mean, I see it with my friends and loved ones now that aren't doing carnivore anxiety all the time, worried about things that don't need to be worried about all of the time. Humans uh, should not be that way, do not have to be that way. And again, I think it's just the, it's the escape from what's natural. We're putting these crazy foods into our body. It's, it's messing up our, our hormones and we're, we're having these uh, worries and concerns and stresses that are not needed. Absolutely. So how much, how much did your anxiety affect your, your life personally, your family life and your professional life? Huge, huge. I would not be doing this documentary. I would have been way too nervous to talk to you, to talk. Uh, there's no way I would have talked to Dr. Barry or Dr. Baker or Dr. Chafee. No way. Uh, so I'm doing things that I wouldn't have done otherwise. Uh, I feel like I'm living my life to the fullest potential I can. I feel like I'm really living now. Part of that is probably also me making up for lost time for all the years I was depressed, depressed and not doing anything. But I think the main part of it is just my brain is in the right place right now. I think, I think all humans should be trying to live their life to their fullest potential instead of needlessly worrying and stressing about things that are going to not have any impact on their life anyhow. So yeah, it's completely changed my life. It's allowed me to, I imagine all of that anxiety and stress takes a big toll on your body. Like if you think about it, your body, you only have so much energy to use. And I was expending an incredible amount of energy stressing about things that didn't need to be stressed about. I was also spending an incredible amount of energy processing food in my body that didn't need to be processed. If you really think about that, what a waste. Like I would go to the grocery store pre-carnivore, fill my car up with waste. It wasn't food. Cereal and Doritos and ice cream and Diet Mountain Dew. There's no nutrition. I get all the nutrition I need for meat. That was all junk and it was all waste. So I would go out and work really hard for my money, go to the grocery store and waste all of my money on all of this food that was literally waste for my body. But then it gets worse because I would put that food in my body and then my body had to expend an incredible amount of energy to process all of this garbage. My body is probably like, what the hell is this? Like, what is this neon green liquid you keep putting in here and Doritos and Mountain Dew? And like, where's the nutrients? And then my immune system is probably like, is this like a mild poison? What is this? Do you have an allergy to this? And I'm wasting all of this energy with a hundred ingredients in my stomach that then what happens to them all? Right down the toilet, completely wasted, did not need them. And so the anxiety, I was wasting energy worrying about things I didn't need to, coupled with the fact my body was wasting an incredible amount of energy processing all this waste that I didn't need it. So I was fatigued and I was tired. And um, part of that probably exasperated my depression for sure. But I didn't have the energy or motivation to do anything. And probably a big part of that was because I was tired because my body was wasting so much energy and all this unnecessary stuff. Now on carnivore, I have just endless energy to the point I need to exercise during the day or I will be up late at night because I'm like, I'm <laughs> wired. I got too much energy. So I'm getting way more things done now because I have more energy, but also when that brain fog clears, and I believe the brain fog is deeper than most people think. I knew I had brain fog before, but it wasn't until I got into carnivore that I realized the depths of it because I walked around with brain fog for decades and it became normal. It becomes your new normal. Like this is just the way things are. And it's not until that clears, that fog clears that you know how deep it was. And so I'm making better decisions now. I'm, um, I'm using my time more wisely. And just I've got a lot of little things I'm working on. My biggest priority, my mission, my goal in life is this. It's the Healing Humanity documentary, but I still got to pay the bills. This is all a passion project. I'm not making money off of this. So like my business and stuff we're making money on, all of it has improved. Like if I put the business and like my ability to make money and earn money for my family on a chart, you would be able to tell the exact point when carnivore started because it was like this. And then it went up like the efficiency, the decision making and everything. It all improved. And now I look back to and I'm like some of the foolish things I did before. And it's just because I was in that brain fog. I wasn't making good, smart, wise decisions. 
No, nah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I have similar results in the in the business and work area. It's uh, ever since I went carnivore, it just seems like exponentially things are getting better for sure. And right. uh, yep, it all has to do with, in my opinion, the depression, the anxiety, that the brain fog that I was in before. It's just, it's I'm unlocked now. So yeah, it's it's amazing. So so you had mentioned you know the the Doritos, the the Diet Pepsi, all these sorts of things. And so that kind of leads us into the the next issue that was resolved for you by eating a carnivore diet, which is IBS. So can you explain the IBS symptoms that you were having and the severity of that? Yeah, I uh, I was a mess when I started listing some of these things. I'm like, man, I was a mess. Started in high school, started having stomach issues. My stomach was always hurting, always bubbling, gurgling. And sorry if it's indelicate, farting all the time, just right. constant stomach issues uh, on and off for years and years. Uh, went into the doctor a couple of years ago. They diagnosed me with IBS, uh, acid reflux. They gave me medication for acid reflux. I uh, would always have that burning sensation and just stomach pains over and over again. Of all of the ailments and issues I went to the doctor for, I think that was the only one where they mentioned nutrition and they suggested I do this low FODMAP diet, eating certain foods. And again, I did exactly what they said, followed it to a T. I'm really extreme. So like when I do something, I'm all in. I'm either not going to do it or I'm all in. So when I did the SSRIs, the antidepressant, the depression medicine, I did it exactly like they said. FODMAP diet, I did it exactly like they said. It didn't help me. I still had the issues. I still had the stomach pain, the gurgling, the bubbling, and all of that. Uh, so I was on medication for that. I was on the different diets for that. I was on medication for the acid reflux. And that was one of the things that happened fairly quickly on carnivore. I think maybe by week three or something, I started noticing, like, I'm starting to feel better. My stomach's starting to feel better. I'm, I'm not, don't have the bubbling, the gurgling, the farting's going away. I did a video early on. I'm like, I don't even fart anymore. Like, what is going on? I used to fart like 500 times a day on pre-carnivore diet, and I don't even fart anymore. Um, but the gurgling and the bubbling, and then something happens on carnivore that's amazing. I noticed this once before, because like I said, before carnivore, I did every diet, including some extreme, more extreme stuff, I guess, if you call that. But I, I did some fasting, and I did a five-day fast once pre-carnivore. And by day five, I felt so good. Like I couldn't feel my stomach. You get this sensation when you're fasting by day four or five where you just feel, you don't feel like you have a stomach anymore. Like it's just weightless. It's weird. I started feeling that on carnivore. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. That's pretty amazing. That's probably because my stomach was always heavy and always working before. But um, yeah, the IBS stuff went away fairly quickly on carnivore. And there's another thing that made me upset because I even have it right here. These were the acid reflux, the omazepal pills. I, I went through so many containers of these pills over the years. But in retrospect, it's like, why am I taking medication for acid reflux and I still have acid reflux and it's year two and it's year three and it's year four. And I'm still taking this. I still, what am I doing? Like, why am I taking the pill if I still have the acid reflux? Never fixed the problem. And mm -hmm. carnivore, completely gone. I have zero acid reflux. I have zero IBS. I feel, I feel great. My stomach has that light feeling uh, all of the time. Don't have the gurgling, the bubbling, any of that anymore. That's awesome. So, so you said that the doctor essentially prescribed you a, uh, some type of treatment plan or diet plan. What, what exactly was it? Yeah, it's called the FODMAP diet and it's focusing on certain foods. Like I remember one of them they were saying was, I think apples for some reason can cause uh, some of the IBS symptoms or acid reflux. And it was this very regimened list. Like you can have this, but not this. You can have a little bit of this, but not this. And so I, like I said, I followed it to the T and I did it for a couple of weeks and didn't, didn't, didn't help me. Still had the acid reflux and the IBS and things like that. So obviously it wasn't a carnivore diet. <laughs> it was not. No. Had they told me carnivore diet. Yeah. Wow. That would have been a game changer. Wow. So in terms of your sleep, uh, that's another issue that has resolved for you. So you had sleep apnea and, uh, you know, you suffered for that through that for quite a while. So how did that affect your life? Game changer, huge. I had this, I had sleep apnea. And like, when I say these things, I'm not just saying, oh, I think I had sleep apnea. 
I went in for a legit sleep study at a, a place where the, a doctor monitors you all night. And they put all this stuff on you. I, when I went in for that, my breathing stopped. I think it was over 400 times a night. I would stop breathing and then I would be like, and I'd gasp for air. And I would do that over and over and over again. That's sleep apnea. A lot of people have it. So they put me on a CPAP machine, which was ridiculous. You, you, wear, you have this machine and you have this big mask over your face and you strap the thing to your face every night. And it puts this constant pressure on your airway so that I no longer would stop breathing all night, even though I, I would still do it with the CPAP machine on. But the CPAP machine did greatly help. Other than the fact that I have to strap this giant machine to my face every single night and my sleep was still miserable and horrible. Um, that was one of the most incredible things because when I went in for those, and this was over years, I struggled with my sleep and I was using the CPAP machine for years. The sleep doctor, who was a great guy, and I believe he meet, met well, but he told me when I went in, he's like, look, Carrie, you're way overweight. And it's true, I was. And he's like, at least 80 pounds you're going to need to drop. And then maybe we can look at changing the pressures on your CPAP machine, or maybe it'll, even the CPAP machine could go away. But you got to lose this weight. You're, you're overweight. Your neck is really, my neck was huge. Like, my neck has shrunk <laughs> really kind of amazing because I had to wear a dress shirt recently, and it used to be like one of these. But um, he's like, you got to get that down, and then you'll stop snoring. So in my head, it was always like, I'm fat. That's why I'm snoring. That was the only reason. That is completely untrue for my case and so many other cases. I was snoring from inflammation. That was it. And when the inflammation went away, I stopped snoring. I stopped snoring almost immediately on carnivore diet. And I've heard that story from so many people. You guys can do your own research out there. Dr. Jordan Peterson, Joe Rogan. He's one of the most famous carnivores out there. He's been doing it for six years. He's probably going on year seven by now. He told Joe Rogan, I stopped, sleep, I stopped snoring the first week on carnivore diet. And I've heard that story over and over again. I stopped snoring on carnivore diet before I lost a pound. And I've since, again, on my healing humanity journey, I'm like, why is this? I've talked to more doctors and I've learned from them. It's just inflammation. You get inflamed, your tongue gets inflamed, your airway gets inflamed, and it closes up when you're sleeping. And that's it. Being overweight could also, of course, contribute to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, I didn't lose a pound and I stopped snoring. And I've heard that story probably hundreds of times throughout my YouTube comments from other people. They stopped snoring doing carnivore diet. That's a game changer alone. Um, just like, again, going back to why are we in this spot? It's from being unnatural humans. How unnatural is it that in order to sleep, I would have to take a machine and a mask and strap it to my head and pump air into my airway in order to not die at night breathing. All because why? Because I was drinking Diet Mountain Dew and eating ice cream and having junk food all day that was causing inflammation in my body. It's just such a departure from natural. Uh, so yeah, that's been huge. And you know, initially when I, when I stopped snoring, the depression started going away. So I'm like, it had to have helped the depression, but I, I really think it was some of those other factors we talked about earlier getting the cholesterol back and getting the hormones balanced. And there's probably several things, but it had to have helped the depression getting the sleep in order. And again, that's like worth the price of admission alone for carnivore. If I was still a hundred pounds heavier than I am now, and I could have just stopped snoring and had proper night's sleep at night, I would give, I would take the hundred pounds back in a second. No questions asked. Wow. So how long did it take before, you know, once you started the carnivore diet, did it take before you effectively had, you could stop using your CPAP? Um, well, I had experience before, so I was doing keto on and off for years. So I did keto for a while and I stopped using it. Um, I, but I, I went off it and then I had to go back on it. When I did carnivore, it was several weeks and I always caution people, don't just quit it. Here's the beauty with the CPAP machine. Almost every modern CPAP machine, it will actually tell you how many times you had apneas throughout the night and how many times you stopped breathing. I actually, mine had Bluetooth and it would go right on my phone. It'd be like 200 times last night or hundred times. So I monitored mine. So anyone out there that's uh, snoring and you're, you're thinking about getting on your CPAP machine, of course, talk to your doctor, do it properly, but use your, use the technology you have. You can Start carnivore and you can monitor how many times you're having apneas. You can just watch it go down. It's a beautiful thing. I've witnessed it for other people too. My wife, 
she's uh she started carnivore she's she's doing keto now that's a whole other story she's getting back into carnivore now but she started carnivore and i'm creepy i don't care i did it i filmed her at night sleeping and it was amazing she was snoring the first day she was still standard american diet the second day that she did carnivore i swear her snoring was 80 percent I have footage of this too, by the way. And then the third day, it was like 60%. And then the fourth day, it was like 50%. I think it was around day six. There was no more snoring. And she was just like peacefully sleeping like a baby. Like I literally watched as her diet improved from the standard American diet and processed food to carnivore and getting rid of that inflammation, snoring go down, 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 down till like day five and it was completely gone. And I, I literally, I have footage of it. I, I did a YouTube video on it. I shared it with, with her permission, by the way. I got her permission. She's like, fine, if it's going to help other people. But uh, I've heard that story over and over again. So it's, it's amazing. But it happens really quick because I guess, sorry, long answer short, pretty darn quickly because the inflammation is what's causing it for a lot of people. And inflammation going away on carnivore happens really quickly for a lot of people. And uh, I, I hear that over and over again from people. So. Yeah, it sounds rather rapid to me. I mean, if you've been living with a condition for years and and even if it took six months to, to not be able to have to use that machine again, I mean, that still seems relatively short time, but yours was what, seven weeks? I mean, yeah. that seems like a blip for sure. So were you sad to see the CPAP machine go bye-bye? No, I, as you know, Adam, I love movies. My wife right. and I, we have our small town movie theater. I, I, most people have seen this, not everyone, but that movie, um, office space they they act they absolutely despise the fax machine they take it out into a field and they just beat it with a bat that's what i i haven't done it yet but that's what i maybe i'll do that in a youtube video i want to do that with my cpap machine i'm so happy to see that thing go i hated that thing so much it was yeah it was a nightmare it actually helped me too so i should be thankful but still i i hated it i love that scene in that movie right <laughs> definitely envision you do it <laughs> Uh, that's funny. So next, next, uh, thing that you have solved with the carnivore diet, and I'm going to read this verbatim, uh, on this list that you sent me. So forgive me ahead of time. <laughs> so o obesity, you're down 102 pounds since you're heaviest. And, uh, there's another side note of fatty McButter pants. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little nickname I had for my former self, but the girls and I joke around. I used to be, cause what'll happen. It's interesting. As I've lost the weight. So yes, I'm down 102 pounds since my heaviest. Most of that I lost on carnivore. I did lose some of that on keto before, yo-yoing on and off for years and years. But most of that I lost on carnivore. But yeah, my girls, I've been doing YouTube for eight years. And every now and then we're watching some YouTube video and it'll recommend one of my old videos and it'll pop up. And the, my girls, one of them, Alyssa, will be like, oh, look, it's Fatty McButterpants again. <laughs> so, I don't mind. Fat shame me all you want. I don't care. So yeah, but. That's incredible. So it's, I'm down 102 pounds since my heaviest uh, on carnivore. And like, I, if that isn't life changing alone, like I, we were at the gym uh, the other day, Emma and I, and I'm like, I should just try to lift 100 pounds. Like, I don't even know if I can lift it. I was carrying that around before. Wow. So again, that's completely life changing. And I think most people do carnivore diet to lose weight. And it's a visual thing. So like my thumbnails oftentimes will show fatty McButter pants on one side and where I'm at now on the other. <laughs> and it gets people to click because that's why they want to start it. But honestly, 100%, I would take that 100 pounds back in a second if it meant the depression was gone forever or the sleep was improved forever. I would totally trade it for those things. But of course, it's wonderful to be 100 pounds uh, lighter. Uh, it's kind of like I was saying with the depression though. It's not like, oh, I'm just, I'm kind of at the proper weight now. The muscle comes on quicker on carnivore. It's like my whole body's kind of changing. Uh, I probably have more energy for several reasons, but not carrying around an extra hundred pounds gives me more energy to, to do other things as well. But yeah, I'm just, I'm energetic. The mood is better and I I'm exercising more now than I ever have because I have that excess energy. And it seems like the muscle comes on a lot quicker on carnivore as well. So it's not like I'm just steady, but it, it feels like I'm actually improving beyond what the normal would be. That's awesome. So the, the weight loss is, is great. Uh, you know, I'm not discounting that. And the long, more I get, you know, I'm in this space and talk to people, 
that seems to be the, the, the least of their worries. Uh, you know, most of these other things are the, are the major issues and problems like the depression, the anxiety. So, uh, you, were you still overweight when your depression and anxiety, uh, was lifting? Oh yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily seem to be connected to, to being obese. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it, I, I think there's probably several factors, but I think it was maybe a little bit, probably because I was overweight. So I was expending more energy just to move around and I was fatigued and it, the overweight and the snoring messed up my sleep. So those ways, but I really think the depression was just eating the proper foods and getting the fat back that my body was craving. I feel like when I eat a fatty ribeye, like my body's like, you, there it is. 43 years later, that was it. Bingo, eat more of that. And I feel incredible when I do it. And I think that's kind of the biggest part, but probably several factors for sure. That's, that's awesome. That's good to know, especially for people that may be, you know, obese, severely obese, or even just a little, little overweight that, and they're also depressed that, you know, once they start eating a proper human diet, that they could mentally start for feeling better, right? Yes. Yeah. Just to add to that real quick. Mm-hmm. Really good point, Adam. And our friend Bill in Alaska, 700 pounds, stuck in his house for four years, hasn't left. He suffered from deepest, darkest clinical depression. That's one of the reasons I'm like, we're brothers, because we kind of been through this thing together. He's one of the first people we're filming for Healing Humanity. His depression and anxiety, he just did a little testimonial video for me. Gone, completely gone. He says he has, this is his quote, I have my life back now. And he's still hundreds of pounds overweight. So it's, uh, there's another I sort of testament that. to that. He hasn't I lost all of the weight yet, but the depression, anxiety went gone. And I think it was two weeks into carnivore. He called me and he's like, Carrie, this is amazing. I'm like, what? He's like, all of this pain I had in my legs is gone. And my, I, I, he's like, I know I have a long, long way to go, of course, but my legs aren't rubbing together and my lower back and stuff. There's this pain is gone. And I was like, inflammation bill your inflammation's going away because you're not eating that highly inflammatory food anymore that happens so quickly uh on carnivore so there's some really good hope for people that are considering carnivore man give it some time because that happens quickly for a lot of people that inflammation going away and it has a lot of downstream effects yeah i love that that's that's tremendous uh, for bill and and uh yeah it's, i mean it's not going to just affect him it's going to affect his family members too you know with him being in a good mood so i love that so your next issue that you have here is something that you had for a while, which is an irregular heartbeat, and it's now regular. So how, how long had you lived with an irregular heartbeat? My entire life, 43 years, I was born with an irregular heartbeat. And yeah, throughout my life, like in kindergarten, they, back then it was a huge thing. I had to strap this uh, heart monitor on, and they'd just keep a close eye on it. Every couple of years, I'd have to get tests for it. Um, five years ago, when I was in some of the deepest depression I was ever in, I was sitting on the couch and half of my face went numb and I got really confused and I went to stand up and I got dizzy and my wife, Jen called an ambulance. And I don't know if I listed this on the things I sent you, Adam, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had a mini stroke. I was diagnosed with a TIA, uh, mini stroke. Oh goodness. Um, and, uh. Yeah. Wow. Sorry. Just thinking back now. Sorry. What was your question again? Uh, basically how long you had lived with this, uh, irregular heartbeat. And yes. Then, uh, yeah. You've had it. Sorry. And five years ago you had a test done. I was reminiscing about my mini stroke and the depression. Um, mm -hmm. the, so the irregular heartbeat, I, I was diagnosed with a mini stroke. I went into the hospital. I was there for five days. They did all these tests on me. And of course they knew I had an irregular heartbeat. Well, the irregular heartbeat up to that point wasn't, there wasn't anything, it wasn't AFib. When you get an AFib irregular heartbeat, that can um, increase your risks of stroke and heart disease and things like that. So I didn't have that. So it was always just like, it's fine. We'll just keep keeping an eye on it. Well, then I had this mini stroke and they checked into it more and they did more tests and they found out I have a low ejection fraction which basically just means my heart cannot keep up with the needs of my body. It's not pumping enough blood to keep up with the needs of my body. Uh, then I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure, which uh, when I heard that, I'm like, okay, I'm dead now. Like, what is this heart <laughs> failure? Right. It's not quite that bad. It's bad, but it's not quite that. It doesn't mean you're, you're going to die. It just basically means your, uh, 
ejection fraction is low enough that it's not keeping up with the needs of your body and they got to put you on more medication and they've got to do more tests and they have to keep an eye on it and they have to do more of those things. So I have an irregular heartbeat since I was born. I have a low ejection fraction and congestive heart failure as of like five years ago. So my entire life I've had this irregular heartbeat. Well, a couple months into carnivore, my wife Jen and I were watching a movie at home and uh, in bed and she had her head on my chest and she just sat up and she looked at me. She's like, you don't have an irregular heartbeat anymore. Your heartbeat is beating normally. I've just been listening to it for like the last five minutes as we're watching this. She didn't like the movie we're watching either, by the way. I wasn't paying attention to the movie. And so I immediately went to the uh, Walgreens and I bought a stethoscope. They sell those at Walgreens, by the way. I'm like, I got to hear this for myself. And I listened to it. My heartbeat is normal for the first time in 43 years. I'm like, this is just crazy. This is incredible. Wow. So, um, and then of course, healing humanity. I'm on this journey to learn more. So I started doing more research and I was very blessed and fortunate to interview Dr. Philip Ovadia. He is a heart surgeon. He's performed over 4,000 heart procedures. He's also a carnivore. Uh, he's also pretty awesome. But one of the many things I learned from him was while in ketosis, which carnivore is just an ex extreme version of the keto diet, I'm in ketosis as a carnivore, the heart performs much more efficiently. Turns out the brain performs much more efficiently too. The human body can, can run on sugar or it can run on fat. And, but I never heard that before. I wish I had learned that a long time ago because I did keto on and off for years. If one of those cardiologists would say, hey, you know, this isn't going to fix everything, but when you're in ketosis, your heart performs much more efficiently. Well, now it turns out my irregular heartbeat is gone. I am, I have an appointment to go in. It was actually supposed to be last week and they've rescheduled it for January because I want to get my ejection fraction tested again and see if it's done anything for my congestive heart failure. I don't know if it has. I don't, I've never heard of that happening before. And of course, this is all anecdotal. The only thing I can tell you is my irregular heartbeat of 43 years is now regular. And the only other thing that is just incredible to me is I don't have the symptoms that I had for years before carnivore that I believe were a symptom of the low ejection fraction. I used to stand up and I would get dizzy. Uh, I used to be fatigued all the time. Like if I would just stand up and go do something, I would be losing my breath. I have that no more. I, I, I was sharing this with someone else. I said one of the best examples I have is one of the consistent things, mostly consistent is we pretty much always go to church on Sunday for years. And when I used to go to church, you'd have to stand up and sing and sit down and stand up and sing and sit down like 10 times during church. And every time I would stand up, I would get lightheaded. And it was to the point where we would be strategic. Jen would stand next to me and she'd have her arm right next to me just to make sure I like don't fall over during church. Wow. That's been cut. When I started doing carnivore before I noticed the irregular heartbeat being fixed. I started noticing this. I even said it to Jen at church one time. I'm like, I'm not dizzy anymore. Like for the first time in years, I'm standing up and I'm not dizzy anymore. And then after that too, I'm like, I'm not even fatigued anymore. And then it's like a couple of weeks in the car where I'm like, wait, I'm not, I, I could like run right. I could go sprint up a hill right now and I'm not getting tired anymore before just walking to the bathroom. I would lose my breath. So something has changing for sure now people could say well maybe that's because you lost all the weight and you're sleeping better that could all be true and i could very well still have congestive heart failure and a low ejection fraction i'm not going to know until i go in but i'm going in and i'm going to share the results whatever they may be so i'm i'm looking forward to that for sure but it's just incredible that that's happened and like i said last thing i'll say is i've done a lot of research on this since and i have heard i've had individuals that i've interviewed tell me that happened to them too that their irregular heartbeat normalized uh doing carnivore diet i've heard it several times since which kind of amazing to me that's awesome that's got to be a huge uh improvement in your life to not have to go through you know the the dizziness and the you know feeling like you're going to faint and things like that yes huge awesome so now we have a few things that uh, we want to touch on as well that have healed for you and uh so one of one of these is uh arthritis slash gout can you kind of explain what what happened there Yes. 18 months before I started carnivore, I got a horrible pain in my foot, my right foot, the second toe. And it hurt so bad. I was on crutches for a while. It felt like a fractured bone. I went into the doctor. I was diagnosed with gout. I disagreed with the diagnosis, but I listened to the doctor and they put me on some more of these to add to my box of medication. Uh, 
And they told me the same thing they did with the depression. It's going to take a couple months before we know if it works. I did exactly what they said. It did nothing. Then they did some injections in my foot. Then it got worse and worse to the point where I could barely put any pressure down. I was hobbling around uh, for about a year or so. I just, I didn't do much of anything because it just hurt to walk around. Like I remember the family went to a big amusement park. Can't do it. Can't walk around. Uh, so it got worse and worse. And by like the third or fourth appointment, I told the guy, I'm like, I don't think this is gout. Like I, I, he suspected it was gout because my dad had gout. They checked my uric acid levels. They weren't even high, but he was just like, yeah, it's gout. Go away. Take these pills. And I, so I kept doing it and doing it for 18 months. Eventually I, I, I got so desperate. I went to a foot specialist. This was the third foot guy I saw. And he did all these, um, all this imaging on my foot. He's like, that's not gout. It's just a, a whole bunch of like acute arthritis concentrated in that one area. There's a surgery that we can do in order to relieve the pressure. It basically involved cutting the toe and putting like this little metal ball bearing sort of thing. It was like a pretty, a pretty serious surgery. And that was one of the last things, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back before I found carnivore. Thankfully, I, did, I was so close to doing the surgery. I didn't do the surgery. I found carnivore. And that was one of the things that took the longest for carnivore to heal. But that was just arthritis. And anytime you hear itis, it's inflammation. There's all sorts of different things that end in itis. It's almost always inflammation. That was inflammation. Well, I, the, the other thing on carnivore that went away quickly was I had inflammation in my lower back, elbows, uh, places I didn't realize I had it. Those went away relatively quickly. The pain in my foot started going away around, I think, four weeks on carnivore. And I think it was around, I don't know, maybe two months in. One day I was like, I have no more pain in this toe anymore. After literally, it was exactly 18 months, every single day having pain. I knew it because every single time I stepped down on it was completely gone uh, on carnivore. And it's been that way ever since. Wow, that's incredible. So you, you mentioned you had some inflammation in your lower back. Uh, what, what kind of issues did you have there? Every, Jen could, my wife, Jen could attest to this, uh, every night, can you rub my back? I bought one of those fancy massager things, um, every night and she would do it, but it would never fix it. And it was years and years of this lower back pain. And in my head, it was just like, yeah, it was just cause I was foolish. You know, when I was younger, I would lift heavy things. I wouldn't bend properly at the knees or whatever, probably injured myself. And it's just going to be this way forever. No, it was just. For some reason, my inflammation, lower back. And again, speaking of things that change on carnivore for a lot of people, lower back pain and inflammation. Because I had so many people say the same thing to me. My back doesn't hurt anymore. I, I thought that was like a permanent thing. So yeah, that's completely gone on carnivore and a, a huge blessing because that was very, very painful having that every single day. Wow. That's, that's awesome. So it's, it's, uh, almost incredible to know that you had all of these things going on essentially simultaneously. I mean, that had to be miserable. Yes. Yeah. And again, that's the reason people are like, you're so fired up. Carrie's such an upbeat, positive guy. <laughs> it's like, should have seen me before when I was hobbling around depressed, uh, with insomnia, strapping a CPAP machine in my face every single night. I was absolutely a miserable zombie. So it's hard not to be fired up and, and excited and want to share this with other people that are going through these same things. And I see it now too. Like I see it in friends and family. I see it in the general public. I'm like, that guy's got inflammation. That guy coming out of the gas station with the donuts, that's not going to go well. And I'm not judging them. I just feel bad for them. Cause I, I, I was there and I, I know what it's, I know what's happening for them and, uh, how easy it is to reverse it. That's, that's incredible. So we're going to sh shift gears here a little bit. And, uh, you know, I've, I've read some comments and things like that on your videos. Uh, I know that you get way more, uh, probably emails and things like that, that, that most people don't know about. So, uh, what, what do you feel when you hear someone tell you that, you know, they were in such a dark place mentally and emotionally and, or maybe their health condition was so bad that they were just ready to die. And, and they tell you that now they have hope, they're joyous for the first time in years, their health is now improving or getting better because you decided that you were gonna share your experience with the carnivore diet. Yeah, that's a great question, Adam. I, uh, 
my eyes are welling up a little bit if that answers your question let's just leave it at that and go no it's uh it's like become my purpose in life now and i get these comments often uh how, how people are depressed and they're hopeless i get them on both ends sadly i get them where they're depressed and hopeless and they don't know what to do i also get them they were depressed and they were hopeless and they watched my 30-day video a couple months ago and their depression and anxiety is completely gone it is uh there's no better feeling in the world than to hear that it's really what drives me every single day it's honestly the sole my sole purpose and goal in life and the reason for doing the healing humanity documentary is to help people that are hopeless there's kind of like uh i don't know like a brotherhood there or something uh i've always had a lot of empathy for people and when i hear those comments i can feel kind of what they're feeling on uh, like a deep level so it, it always resonates with me uh we mentioned our friend bill from alaska he sent me one of those very comments and it was just like within the first couple sentences i'm like i can feel this guy's pain a hundred percent and that's why it was so important to uh make sure that we connected uh so yeah it's 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 incredible uh i will say it's a blessing and i'm not complaining at all it, but it is also it takes a toll on you I get an incredible number of these comments and emails, and uh, I appreciate all of them. It's hard to keep up with them. And they're never, they are never just, I have depression. Uh, and then I did Carnivore, it's gone. They're always, and they're a chapter long because mm -hmm. these people are so excited. I can't blame them. They're so excited and they want to share their story and they want to help other people. And there's that brotherhood there. So. It's amazing and it's a blessing. It also takes a toll after a while, but uh, I'm doing my best to keep up with it. And I'm doing my best to, uh, to share these examples with other people to give them like, look, there is hope. This isn't just me. Uh, me, Carrie here, I'm kind of a weirdo, but no, I am hearing the story over and over again from so many people. That's awesome. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm appreciative that you shared your 30 day video, um, you know, cause I had been part of war for a couple months at that point, uh, maybe three months. And, uh, and then your video came across my feed and I'm like, man, who's this crazy guy, <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, I fell, fell into the rabbit hole with, uh, Homestead Howl videos and, uh, here, here we are. So, uh, you know, I definitely appreciate that what you've done and the impact that you've been able to have simply by sharing, you know, what, what it is you eat and, and what it's helped you with. I mean, it's just the ripple effect is absolutely incredible. So that leads me into my next thing. You've had such a radical transformation that you decided you're going to film a documentary. So all I got to say to that is, wow, you know, like, so t tell us about that. Yeah, well, I found keto through a documentary on Netflix. It's called Fathead. It's a really old one, but it's a good one. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't may, may not necessarily hold up completely nowadays, but uh I never would have heard about keto maybe years ago because this was in the early days. Um, there was some Atkins stuff, I guess, but, uh, and I did, I followed what that documentary said. And like I said, it had a little impact on my depression and things like that. I love movies. My wife and I own our small town movie theater. It's been kind of my only passion. Even when through the depression, that was the only thing sometimes would get me through, take me out of my reality was watching movies. So um, my thing was, I did that 30 day video you mentioned. And it reached a lot of people, but it's like, we're just scratching the surface. There's so many more people that are watching Netflix that don't happen to be weird like me that are on YouTube all of the time. And so it's like, how can we reach the most people uh, with this carnivore story? And, and then I started, like, I, I started doing research and there's like, there's n I don't see any documentaries about carnivore. There's some on keto and other things like that, but there's nothing on carnivore. So it's a decision in retrospect. I'm like, what the heck was I thinking? <laughs> um, but it's also a decision I never would have made pre-carnivore. Um, I think we can reach a lot of people and help a lot of people. And it's a passion project. I, I always want to make that clear to people because not that I'm trying to pat myself on the back, but I feel like my life was so horrible and so miserable. And I had the depression, anxiety, I was overweight and arthritis and all of those issues because of an escape from what is natural, but also because of greed, because of sugar and processed foods that I was addicted to from a young age. And I, I don't have this 
conspiracy theory that there's one evil guy out there like, let's get everyone hooked on sugar. I think it's just business run amok. And business is great. I own my own business. That's how I support myself uh, is from business. So I don't have anything against business, but I think that's one big flaw in it. It's completely blind to something like this. And I think it's a huge detriment to society. So many people are sick. So many people are depressed. So many people are overweight. And a big part of it is just business run amok. So I didn't want that to happen with this documentary. So it's, an, it's entirely a passion project and money we get from uh, GoFundMe donations, selling t-shirts, uh, our Redmond salt shakers, our water bottles, all of, every penny is going towards the documentary. It's a, it's a passion project. I feel like, you know, you mentioned earlier, Adam, you appreciate the 30 day video. I just did that video for fun. I was like, <laughs> I, I do YouTube. Like, this is crazy what's happening to me. Let me just share this for fun. But then when I started hearing those comments, I am hopeless too, or I was hopeless and it helped me. Then it's like, whoa, no, this is kind of important. Then I did some more videos and I'm like, this isn't fun anymore. This is like a responsibility. Like I have to share this information. There's hopeless people out there like I was that need to know about this. So it's definitely turned into a passion project for sure. And I've been so blessed to talk to incredible, incredible people, individuals, which I love. And that's the purpose of the documentary. The purpose of the Healing Humanity documentary isn't to say you should do carnivore like I did, because I don't believe anyone, you can change anyone. The whole purpose is just like, here's my example, the truthful, honest example. And here's the example of other people with other issues and other lifestyles and what, what carnivore diet has done for them. Take those examples and do what you want with it. That's the, that's the thought behind the documentary. That's awesome. I love that. And, uh, you know, I, I truly feel like that, that 30 day video, uh, sparked a transformation for the world. Uh, you know, when it, once you decided that you're going to do this for fun and, uh, you know, the, I think, uh, the Lord, the, what, whatever you want to believe in, uh, decided, you know, we're, we're going to take this guy and we're going to use him to, uh, to heal humanity. And, uh, you know, I'm truly appreciative of you and everything that you're doing in, in regards to that for sure. So what, uh, what would you say to somebody that's considering a carnivore diet and, and uh, you know, they're kind of a little bit skeptical about it and, and uh, you know, they're, they're kind of dipping their toes in a little bit. What would you say to that person? Yeah. So you're probably scared or fearful to do the carnivore diet. Most people are. What I would say to you is you should be scared, fearful of whatever you were doing to get you to this point that you're considering doing the carnivore diet. What people should be scared of, and these are facts, like I like to share the truth and the facts, and you can do your own research on this, but my entire life, I was scared of the carnivore diet. I didn't know what it was, but I was scared of eating fatty meat. I was scared it was going to clog my arteries and I was going to have a heart attack. What I should have been scared of, and this is the facts and this is the truth, and there's studies on this and you can look it all up yourself, is poor metabolic health and inflammation. I had horrible metabolic health and inflammation before this. And Dr. Philip Avadia, heart surgeon, 4,000 heart procedures. That's one of the things he told me is he said, Carrie, you are six times more likely to suffer heart disease if you have poor metabolic health. Six times wow. versus if your cholesterol is slightly elevated from doing something like the carnivore diet. Six times. Nobody in the general public is worried about their metabolic health or inflammation. They're, but everyone's worried about that. So you're probably scared of the carnivore diet, but you shouldn't be. And in most of the things in life that we're fearful from is from lack of knowledge. The beautiful thing is you don't have to listen to me. This information is out there. And the things that you're scared of have been asked and answered over and over again. There's some really smart people out there talking about these things. Like I mentioned, heart surgeon, Dr. Philip Lavadia, that guy could just be doing heart surgery and keeping his head down, but he knows how important proper metabolic health is that he's on YouTube preaching about proper human diet and carnivore diet and eating proper foods. Um, there's some really smart people out there. So you're probably scared for lack of knowledge, but the beautiful thing is in this day and age, we all have one of these fire it up and do some research and you will get over those fears. I say to people, give it a try. Like, what do you have to lose? If you've gotten to this point before, look at all these incredible testimonies. Uh, it's not going to hurt you. And it has literally changed my life forever. And I've witnessed it change the lives of 
I want to say thousands of people at this point, literally millions of views. I get hundreds of comments a day from people that this has changed their lives from. I've talked to so many individuals. So uh, give it a try. What do you what do you have to lose? I The other thing, the last thing I'll say, because I can ramble on this forever, is people out there that aren't going to give this a try. You deserve to live at least one day in your life feeling like I feel feeling like a proper human, living life to the fullest potential without that brain fog, without that depression, anxiety, without those aches and pains, with energy, with, with happiness. Um, it, it just feels amazing. And it's such a shame to me that I know the majority of the people hearing this, they're never going to experience what it's like to feel that way. And it, what a shame. Like, it's a miracle that any one of you listening right now is alive and that you have a life. And to live that whole life, and not realize your full potential, it's uh, it's such a shame. So give it a try. Don't be scared. Give it a try. You can do anything it. for 30 days, right? I, I would recommend 60 days, but you can do anything for 60 days. I agree. Yeah. Do it long enough until you feel happy and then decide if you want to stop or not. <laughs> right. Yeah, for sure. I love that. So where, where can everybody find you? Healinghumanity.com movie awesome yes that's the big one uh otherwise i have my own youtube channel homestead how i've been doing homesteading stuff for years and i have a lot of the carnivore videos on there as well uh we're still trying to raise funds for healing humanity we're we are if a job's worth doing it's worth doing well adam has been an integral part in the documentary helping me um couldn't be doing it without you adam really uh we want to do the best job we possibly can so that we can reach the most people we possibly can. We want to reach millions and millions of people. We want to get this on a big streaming service. And to do that, we have to film it to the utmost quality, uh, which is expensive. So we've already started filming. We've made some amazing progress, but we're still trying to raise funds so that we could film the rest of this properly so that we can reach the hopeless. Uh, so we're uh, we have T-shirts and mugs and things like that, but the to get the biggest bang for your buck, where we have a GoFundMe set up, and all that information is on the Healing Humanity uh, website. Awesome, I love that. So, thank you so much, Carrie, for joining me. I appreciate you, and I appreciate your family for sharing you and everything that you're doing to heal humanity. And much love, brother. I appreciate you. Uh, likewise, I love what you're doing, Adam. Carnivore today, for sure. Appreciate everything you've done to help with the documentary. Like I said, we wouldn't be doing it without without you helping me. So I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. I can't think of a better cause to to join in. So appreciate it. Thank you.